All right. So I'm recording. Recording. Hi. Okay. Hey, Ohana. Welcome to the next <laughs> segment of Mrs. Four is finding things to do. <laughs> okay. With so her, luckily, with her family members. With my family members, exactly. So this is my sister, Mrs. Jill Sharfman. I know a couple of you ran into her months ago. Um, where was that? At charcoal during lunch time. Charcoal with busy in Brooklyn. With busy in Brooklyn, correct. Which did she have a refuge lema? Because I know she, she was did. Oh, she okay, did. Good. She is recuperated, but it was a very hard road for her. Right. I know she was very vocal about all that. Okay, so glad to hear that. And um, for anyone who has watched the photography series that I'm doing, that is with my niece, who is my sister's daughter. So right. yeah, bringing in the whole fam over here. <laughs> um, so luckily, I have such a talented family that. We can pick everyone's brains. So my sister is a holistic nutritionist, um, a certified holistic nutritionist, and um, is, that's pretty much like having a doctor in the family. We call her <laughs> with all our medical questions and um, has a podcast, actually, which some of you may or may not know about. I know that I listen to it. It's called, obviously, I totally listen to it. <laughs> it's called Let My People Eat. Um, clearing the cutter of nutrition speak for kosher healthy stuff, right? That's not right. It's, it's how to maintain a healthy lifestyle while keeping kosher. Got it. Okay. Um, so seeing that we're all in quarantine and I know that staying healthy, um, and moving around still, those are concerns while we're in quarantine, um, are something we should be thinking about. So let's, let's hear what you can recommend for us. I don't know if you wanted to start, you want me to ask a question. I'll start. For, so first of all, I want to say hello to all my quarantine teenagers out there. Uh, <laughs> um, and I know that this is a very, it's a hard time because as teenagers, you want to be out with your friends. You want to be social. You want to be very independent of your parents. And here you are back with them. Um, and really your movements are very restricted. So I want to say I, I get it. And, you know, it, this too shall pass and it will end and you'll be able to go back to your social lives and spending time with friends. But um, I know that this is, this is a tough time for everybody. Um, and what that, ha what that leads us to or can lead us to is not keeping up with our healthy habits or healthy lifestyles that we may have had in the past or things that we want to do. Because when we're stressed, what do we want? We want pizza, potato chips, chocolate, like all of those things that have sugar and fat and carbs. And there's a reason that when we're under stress, we crave those different kinds of um, foods. It's because they act like natural tranquilizers. They actually do calm us down under times of stress. So it's totally normal that you might be craving, wanting things that you know may not be the rest, best choices for you. And so, and yeah, and it, I mean, adults are dealing with this too. I mean, it's, it's all over the news. You can see it. So there are a couple of things that you can do, which are not that different than what I would normally recommend anybody do during regular time. You know, basically you want to eat healthy, nutritious meals. You want to make sure you're getting sleep and you want to participate in stress reducing activities so something like exercise movement would be an example of that and if you do that it will help you manage better so i have a couple of tips you want me to keep on talking you have any questions yes i'm just going to i'm just going to plug that girls there is still pe class our pe teacher has recorded half an hour sessions that uh, we put on the extracurricular class. It is mandatory that you do some form of PE and log that, but we're trying to help you by posting. Um, this week it was stretching. So when I was looking at it, there were a lot of shoulder exercises, rolling and stretching of the back and the muscles and things like that. So not necessarily vigorous, vigorous but like you were saying, stress reducing and relaxing and just getting your body you know, we're all sitting in certain positions for hours on end more than usual. So, um, right. so we do, we have made PE available on our classroom right. for you, but of course, any form of PE, getting out and walking for sure. Right. Um, that's great. And um, things like yoga also uh, are very helpful. There are a million you have access, but there are tons of free online videos that you can do um, if you really want to start trying out new exercises. There's kickboxing, there's ballet bar, 
Um, there's so many different things that you can access online. So if you want to really try and try something new, yoga, whatever, you can always find them online. So um, the first thing I would recommend is that you have a timetable. You try and keep your schedule similar to what you were doing when you were in school. So you have a certain time when you get up every morning and then you dive in and then you have breakfast and then you do your schoolwork and then you have a good healthy lunch and you know, you actually have a plan and a schedule to your day because that will maintain some normalcy. If you just wake up every day when you feel like it, that that's going to definitely throw you off or go to sleep whenever you feel like it. Like right. So I know that was something that some kind of timetable. That was something yes, that very cool. early on uh, everyone advised that you should keep your regular routine, get dressed, don't walk around the house in pajamas because that creates this atmosphere right. and we want to avoid that. Feel as normal as possible. Which yeah. which is why for your own good girls, you still have to be in uniform with your hair up and you know, all that normal stuff. It's for you. That's really um, the next thing I would want to say is don't forget to drink. When we're at home all day, we may not remember to drink <laughs> as often. And sometimes what happens is we eat because we're actually thirsty. So if we drink water, um, that's just going to keep you from just kind of looking around and foraging from snacks. Um, if you have a water bottle, great. You can put rubber bands on it to remind you. You can put timers on your phone. Uh, people put stickies up to remind them. Um, I have, here's my water bottle. And it's like, I try and drink three of these a day and it's 32 ounces, I think, 32 ounces. Um, and it's, it just, it, it motivates me. It has little yeah. sayings yeah. <laughs> throughout the day. Keep going, never give up. Yeah, there you go. And I like the straw too. I have nothing and this belongs to one of my children, so probably there's backwash in it. But um, the rubber yeah. band, the rubber band that you said, I'm assuming you put rubber bands on and then you either take them off as you hit that mark or it's so just- If I want to remember to drink three, I would put three rubber bands on it. Every time I finish and fill it up, I take a rubber band off. So Got by it. the end of the day, I should have no rubber bands left on my water. Got it. I don't have okay. Today, but um, and, and the ones with the straws are great because you can, you, you can be hands free as opposed to the ones that you have to oh, right. twist. And so especially like when I'm driving, it's great. You know, you can just pick it up and you don't have to, but just make sure you wash your water bottles. It's very important because um, they do get dirty. So um, after drinking, I would say that you, you must try, try and make sure that you're eating nutritionally balanced meals. And as the high schoolers in your family, you can be good role models for your parents. If you have younger siblings, older siblings, you can kind of set the tone and say, hey, uh, we're gonna start eating more vegetables and obviously try and help with the preparation. Um, and by turning your, your mindset of you're gonna set this example for others in your family, it could definitely help you stay away from snacking on the highly processed foods like you know the chips the cereals the crackers the cookies you know you can kind of say this is this is what we're going to try and do it may not work not everybody may be on the bandwagon but you can definitely be a role model and by eating this way and eating more nutritious foods basically more fruits more vegetables you're going to become stronger from a stress related standpoint when your body's healthier you're better able to handle stress so that's that's really why you're trying to do this especially at this time like i said you want to do this so, all the time yeah so i i think um i know a lot of people are experimenting now with cooking and baking and things like that and i know in my house Sometimes it's like, hey, what fun twist on Muddy Buddies are we making tonight? Um, so I know there's this there's this urge to, oh, I have time, I should cook. But I guess this is also an area where you should try to keep your cooking experiments more towards the the cleaner side, the lighter side. Ooh, my battery um, just went a little bit dim, so. Um, okay. Let, let's let's end this subject and then I'll go plug it and we will do another session so I, we probably only have okay. a couple minutes left before okay so we're gonna <laughs> say goodbye for now and then we'll pick up 
Um, well, do you want to have a thought you want to finish first about this? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the most important thing is like, try and not give yourself such high expectations because there is a lot of stress going on. Yeah, yeah. one second, I'm going to press pause and I'll plug it in. How about that? And then we can- Okay, go ahead. Pause. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, no. we're back. <laughs> okay. In my so living I'll room. Back, I'll, I'll come back to that last point. Um, so we talked about eating nutritionally balanced meals, so more fruits and more vegetables, less of the processed junky kind of food. Not saying that you shouldn't have treats. I have. <laughs> Not saying that you shouldn't have treats. Treats are fine, but they shouldn't make up the bulk of your meals. Right. Um, and when you do have treats, try and portion them out. So if you're taking popcorn, don't just take the whole bag of popcorn and sit down and start eating. Take a bowl, pour your popcorn in there, and then just eat that portion. Or if you're going to eat cookies, take the one or two cookies out of the bag or take the cup of Muddy Buddies or whatever you're eating and just keep yourself to you know, those portions so that otherwise you sit down and you're with the bag of uh, popcorn and all of a sudden the popcorn is gone. All of a sudden you're without so a bag of popcorn. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we don't want to run out of popcorn. Definitely not. Um, we spoke about exercise. So mm -hmm. that's part of this, the puzzle here too. Um, also, now that the weather in LA is so amazing, I would say- Finally. Tea, finally, yes. Get outside because vitamin D is very important for the immune response. Mm. Open your shades, your windows, sit in sunny areas, get outside, please remember to social distance. Um, but absorbing that vitamin D is very good for the immune system, so. And wanna... vitamin D, just for anyone who's not, comes from the sunlight. So if you're sitting outside, you can roll your sleeves up, you can sit down right. and, and, and what, not put sunscreen on for like for the first 10, 15 minutes, right? Yeah, they say probably 15 to 20 minutes. You don't have to go out in the middle of the day. It's usually when, right. when it's going to be so hot now and the sun is super strong, it's better to go out uh, before 10 and probably like after two. two. They say two, but here these days are very long now. I'd say even a little bit later than that. But um, just, and you feel so much better. So yeah, but like you said, uh, sunscreen, no sunscreen for the first 15 to 20 minutes because that will, that's going to block the vitamin D that, that your body uh, would be absorbing from the sun. So, okay. um, and so the, the last kind of point I want to make is, you know, lower, lower the bar. This is a very stressful time for everybody. Um, you know, everybody's dealing with very, uncertain times right now um, so just talk to yourselves very positively um, try and keep a good attitude um, you know be compassionate towards yourself and just just be good and kind to yourself and the others around you the best that you can I mean I know you know a lot of people are living in smaller you know, bigger groups and smaller areas right now. Yes, my house definitely got smaller over quarantine, yeah. definitely. Yeah, but don't, um, just don't be so hard on yourself. Like you do the best you can. You know, if one day you can go sit outside in the sun and then one day you go ahead and do some yoga or exercise or stretching with your PE teacher, like don't, don't let this overwhelm you. Um, and then I just had a couple of ideas when you're in quarantine to kind of keep you, I'm sure a lot of you are very busy, but things that you can do if you're, if you like journaling, it's not something I enjoy, but if somebody likes mm -hmm. to journal, it's take one of your notebooks and, you know, just keep track every day, you know, it could be one line. It doesn't have right. to be a big line. Or even, I know even like if you take, keep a gratitude journal next to your bed, just yeah. jot down. It doesn't even have to be a line. You just jot, jot down oh, sunshine today because right. that was something that, right. So just exactly. journaling, but also fo trying to focus and reinforce the positive. On the good. Too. So sometimes um, it's to get it out and sometimes it's to shift your perspective a little. Either right. Way. Yeah. And then I know we just finished with Pesach, which was a big Jewish holiday, but the secular holiday coming up is Mother's Day. You should always mm -hmm. be grateful and thank your mother. But, um, you know, maybe even if you have younger siblings, sit down and maybe color some Mother's Day cards, you know, something, something for her. Um, that would be a good thing to do. You can also write letters. If you have friends from camp, 
um, that you want to keep in touch with, um, you know, sit down and write them a letter and send it. I guess you have to leave it with your postman. He'll take it and mail it for you. It's um, um, different. It's different areas of your brain that activate when you write a letter as opposed to typing. So even though we all have everyone on social media, it would be a good exercise to sit and just do that old fashioned. And it's very exciting getting something in the mail too. Yeah. That's certainly sure. handwritten. Yeah. Um, also, uh, for those of you whose grandparents who are, you know, you haven't been able to see your grandparents, you can call them up and maybe interview them. Ask them about their lives. Ask them, you know, when they were born, where they were born, if they have any stories from childhood. It's just a good way that you can connect with them and also spend the time with them because I'm sure if you haven't been seeing them, I'm sure they're, they're lonely and right. they would love the interaction. And then again, if you have other siblings in the house, you could put on a play. Should be a good fun. You can have costumes and kind of set up the stage, or you could do an indoor scavenger hunt. And that's something maybe if you guys wanted to work on as a group, like all of you could come up with different ideas. Five, find five things in the kitchen. Mm. In with letter P. I um kind of a little bit stalled there. You know, kind of maybe. Um, hang a little bit. I think I've lost you that there. That is a group if you want to come up with a, some kind of scavenger hunt, which would be fun. Yeah. Right. Your um, a little frozen. Right. Yeah. Yours is too. You um, yeah. I mean, Rashi made oh, okay. a, Rashi made a scavenger hunt for us, which we all decided to be very silly and really, really get into and we were running around and it was super fun. But I think also it was really fun for Rashi. So um, if you're going to make a scavenger hunt, maybe think of it not so much as you're planning on keeping the family busy for half an hour, but it keeps you busy for half an hour. And it's maybe five minutes with the family. It was yeah. still fun. She had a blast. So right. um, yeah, so, so definitely. Guys. So those are just some of the ideas of things. You know, I know you have schoolwork and I know I'm sure there are chores in the house, but these are just some fun things that, you know, you can try doing and um, maybe distract you from what's going on. All right. Amazing. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, maybe if any of the girls have any specific questions, we'll do a follow-up session. Awesome. Okay. Now we've got other people on phone calls here, so I'm going to stop recording. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Jill Sharfman from the podcast, Let My People Eat. And we are going to sign up for today. to the podcast. Let my people eat. Yes. Let my people eat. It's supposed to be a plan. Let my people go. I hope everyone got that. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bye. bye.